with today's video, you would never guess there was another ship of the same name, but there we go. <laughs> so this video is kind of an interesting one because I never knew about this ship until it was brought up in another video. And that video belonged to a friend and follower who's been following me for a while. And he is called Maritime History. And Maritime shared the story of the ship with us, when, well, within the Maritime History community. And when I saw it, I thought, okay, this is a really good video. So I want to give a massive shout out to Maritime for introducing me to the ship and I hope that everyone will enjoy it. So this story is of the ship that struck on Bellows Rock. In May 1915, the Cunard liner, the RMS Lusitania, sank near the Atlantic Ocean where she took a serious loss of life. She was on her way to Liverpool from New York City while in passenger service and because of the sinking, this gave the United States of America an excuse to declare war against Germany. However, she isn't the only Lusitania to sail the seas. There have been four ships with the same name and all of these ships had their separate fates. One of these unknown Lusitanias was the SS Lusitania, or the Pride of Portugal. The SS Lusitania was a Portuguese twin-screw ocean liner that became infamous for being wrecked in South Africa in fog while making her voyage to Mozambique. While there is little information, this video will give a small in-depth into her history. While it isn't known which year she was constructed, the SS Lusitania was launched on the 12th of February 1906 at the Sir Rylington Dixon & Co located in Middlesbrough, England, and I apologise if I butchered one of the names. But despite its construction in England, the liner was built for the National Navigation Company of Lisbon, Portugal. The SS Lusitania had three other ships, the SS Cuso, the SS Gano, and the SS Chimbrazo, and I apologise as well for butchering the names. The ships were part of the Orient Steam Navigation Company Limited, which was founded in 1881. The Orient Steam Navigation Company was a British shipping company that had connections with other organisations in Europe, Britain and beyond. When the ship was complete, the company had planned to take the SS Lusitania into passenger service where she would be on the Cape Route, travelling from Portugal to Africa. Upon construction, the SS Lusitania weighed 5,557 tonnes and would have had the capacity of accommodating under 830 passengers, crew and African labourers. At sea, she had made several voyages from Portugal to Africa between 1906 to 1911. However, in April 1911, things were about to change. On the 15th of April 1911, the SS Lusitania began a return voyage from Mozambique to Portugal. But before arriving in Portugal, she was to be docked in Cape Town, where she would take on as many passengers, labourers and crew as she could carry. During this voyage, there were 25 first-class passengers, 57 second-class passengers, 121 third-class passengers, 475 African labourers and 150 crew members. The captain in charge was Francisco de Silvia Fara. And again, I apologise for butchering the name. My Italian's not great. <laughs> However, the 475 African labourers weren't coming with the passengers and crew as there were plans to disembark them at the country of Sanro Tomini and Principel. And 
and I apologize if I butchered that name too. <laughs> The country was known for its coffee and cocoa plantations, which would be owned by the Portuguese, who were working alongside various trading companies, possibly located in Portugal. It is believed that there were 150 plantations, which would begin in 1852 and end in 1914. On the night of the 18th of April, the SS Lusitania was sailing in Cape Point when the captain saw the Cape Point lighthouse and set a course towards it. The ship took a wild turn around Cape Point, but heavy fog rolled in. Despite being high above the cliffs, the captain and crew were unable to see the lighthouse, which put them and everyone else in danger. At 11.40pm, the captain and crew regained sight of the lighthouse, but the SS Lusitania appeared to be very close. It was heading into Cape Point as the sea current pulled the ship northwards towards the reefs. Immediately, the order was given to turn the Lusitania hard over. However, within minutes, the ship hit Bellows Rock with a huge impact. With the collision on the rocks, many passengers felt the bump. The captain gave the order to prepare the lifeboats and to assist passengers onto the boat deck. But, because of the strong current, some were apprehensive to enter into the lifeboats and for that reason some chose to remain on the Lusitania. Meanwhile, the captain ordered the crew to fire the Lusitania's flares, which was spotted by the keeper of the lighthouse, J. E. Allen. With quick action, Allen called Simonstown for assistance and to order rescue ships to travel to the scene and pick up passengers, crew and labourers. Lighthouse staff even made signals to alert people nearby with lanterns. In haste, two vessels were dispatched to rescue the SS Lusitania and they were a tugboat named the Scotsman and the British warship the HMS Ford. During the evacuation, lifeboats that were launched successfully were attempted to row towards the coast, but despite the sea being calm, the current made things difficult and some of the lifeboats struggled to row towards land. In all, most of the ship's lifeboats made it off the ship. Seven of them were never launched from the Lusitania, but the Scotsman picked up the remaining seven lifeboats as well as the remaining people who were still on board the Lusitania. Two lifeboats made it to the Diaz beach after they were guided to shore. Sadly though, one lifeboat, though it is not known which number it was, got swamped by the strong current and it capsized beneath the waves. Eight people died on this lifeboat. The next day, the fort arrived on the scene, relieving the Scotsman from picking up the remaining people on board. By 10am, all the passengers, labourers and most of the crew members were off the ship, with the exception of the captain. Captain Farrah did not want to leave the Lusitania, choosing to remain aboard and possibly go down with the ship when it slipped off Bellows Rock. The captain had felt guilty for his actions and blamed himself for the incident. Fortunately, he changed his mind after he had a conversation with the captain of the fort who boarded the Lusitania to convince Farrah to change his mind as there was no obligation to go down with the ship. Before he left the Lusitania, the captain lowered the ship's flag to half-mast. The SS Lusitania was left to rot and with the strong current pulling her off Bellows Rock, the ship slipped at 10am on the 20th of April. The fort, carrying the rest of the Lusitania's crew, passengers and labourers, sailed towards Cape Town. Out of the 774 people on board, 
766 survived the sinking. Following the sinking, local authorities decided to construct a new lighthouse on Cape Point, where its light could be visible to ships in heavy fog. Once built, it was placed further south on the point, which was very close to the sea. Over a century later, the lighthouse is still in use. Today, the site of the wreck is a popular place for local scuba divers. However, because the site is deeper than the recommended depth for an average diver and it's unsafe for swimming and surfing, Diaz Beach and Bellows Rock are left undisturbed. Although she became the unknown Lusitania, the SS Lusitania did change the safety at sea before the Titanic disaster. The construction of the lighthouse following her sinking paved the way to ensure that there would be safety protocols on ships. While her legacy isn't well known, it's hoped that sharing her story will open new doors in getting to know ships that have made a difference on the sea, even if they are overshadowed by famous liners like the RMS Lusitania.